Good morning, everyone. I want to acknowledge that we're gathered here on the traditional territory of the signatories to Treaty 6 and acknowledge the Métis people who share a deep connection and history with this land. I'm pleased to be joined today by our leader, Rachel Notley, as well as environment critic, Marlon Schmidt, whose beautiful riding of Edmonton Gold Bar we are in today. I want to thank our hosts, Steve McDougall, owner of Benchmark Instrumentation and Analytical Services, which for folks at home is the shop we are located in today. Uh, I'd also like to thank Warren Chung, president of Well Resources, whose company is finding new ways to get more value out of Alberta's natural resources while creating jobs and lowering emissions. And the goal, and that's a goal that all Albertans share. Through our consultations on albertasfuture.ca, we've heard from more than 75,000 Albertans across a variety of economic sectors. On matters of energy, we heard loud and clear that we need to stop looking to the past and repeating old mistakes, and we need to plan for the future. That's why we've released a proposal to expand hydrogen fuel development and to turn our natural drilling expertise to more geothermal energy. Today, we're going to talk about our bitumen and new ways that we can use it to grow our economy into the future. And with that, I'll turn things over to our leader, Rachel Notley. Well, thank you very much, Kathleen. I'm very pleased to be able to be here today with all of you uh, to be able to uh, talk about Alberta's future. For months, and in fact, uh, over a year now, our party has been proposing new ideas for the diversification of our energy industry and for creating new jobs for the hardworking Albertans who drive it forward jobs that are sustainable long into the future. Now, Benchmark really represents a great Alberta success uh, in this regard, one I'm sure that Steve will speak to in a moment, uh, in just a bit. Because from early days working on oil field solutions out of a garage almost 15 years ago, Benchmark is now a multifaceted and diversified engineering and fabrication firm, providing in-demand products for environmental monitoring, emissions measurement, and even applications for safer pipelines. They are a leader in supporting energy companies here and abroad, and they are 100% focused on diversifying their expertise into new areas as well, including, as we will see shortly, the oxygenation of critical water systems. Now, this is the story of today's Alberta, innovative, optimistic, and growing. Our world is changing rapidly, and in the coming decades, we see an energy transformation. Albertans need a government that is actually ready for that future, ready to work through the challenges and seize on the opportunities. When it comes to fighting climate change and lowering emissions, Albertans want us to not only take real action, but to find ways to create new jobs and opportunities for future generations in the process. So let me be clear, under any government that I lead, Alberta Energy will continue to be an essential building block of that low carbon economy. However, we will use it in new and in creative ways to extract maximum value while lowering pollution. And that is part of how we are going to accomplish that big goal, net zero emissions, a future where we are taking as much carbon out of the atmosphere as we're putting in. So today we're going to hear from Well Resources about their innovative process for taking bitumen waste, or asphaltines as they're called, the stuff that's at the very bottom of a barrel of oil, and instead of throwing it away, using it to make new products, things like carbon fire, fiber, and even waterproof cement. Now, this technology, BBC, or Bitumen Beyond Combustion, as it's often referred to, is something that our government funded research into back in 2018. And today, the estimates from Alberta Innovates are quite astounding. They report that this technology could add value exceeding $50 per barrel on top of the world market price perhaps adding even more than $100 to the current price per barrel of oil. If our ambitions were met, Alberta could add $60 billion to our economy by 2050, which is around 18% of our current GDP. So this is big. 
Now, another study from the University of Calgary estimates that this kind of asphaltine removal and processing could also free up 30% of general pipeline capacity and cut emissions by at least 17%. Put it bluntly, this is a game changer for this province. And so that's why I'm here today to commit that if we are elected to government, we will seize this opportunity. We will incent asphaltine extraction, processing, and other partial upgrading technologies under the Alberta government's diversification programs. And we will promote investment in products derived from asphaltines to become a key component in provincial and federal manufacturing strategies. We will push Ottawa to recognize asphaltine extraction as being eligible for existing offset credit programs to provide greater investor certainty within this space. And for those tired of the posturing, I think that's actually a real proposal to take to Ottawa that would actually help Alberta's economy. More jobs, more diversification, more value, more upgrading for the resources that we all own. And on top of it, lower costs and lower emissions. It's a very rare win-win-win-win scenario. But we need a government that is focused, not distracted. So I promise that if we're elected, our NDP government won't stick our heads in the sand. We will grow and we will diversify our energy sector, realizing our full potential as the 21st century energy leader the world needs and Alberta can be. Cleaner, more responsibly produced oil, where we ship to new markets through Trans Mountain and then scrape the bottom of every barrel for extra value. Leveraging our natural gas into hydrogen fuel and our drilling expertise into geothermal energy, more wind, more solar, a North American renewable powerhouse, there is just so much. An energy leader in every sense of the word. Alberta has the resources that we need to develop the products and the solutions that, are need, that will allow us to thrive in a modern economy, adding value, creating jobs, and diversifying our economy and the process. And I urge people to check it out in our paper that outlines all of these commitments right here. So uh, I'm going to pass it back over to Kathleen so we can hear more about this uh, fabulous and amazing technology. Thank you, Rachel. I'd now like to invite Warren Chung, President of Well Resources, to speak a bit more about the processes and opportunities and to show us some of the products that can be made from bitumen waste. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, I just want to start off by thanking all of you for joining us today. Times are tough right now. After two years of navigating through a global pandemic, Albertans face historic levels of inflation, increasing interest rates, and together these factors have drastically impacted affordability and the cost of living within our province. Meanwhile, energy prices hit all-time highs this year, which is supposed to be great for our province. But when I speak to colleagues, neighbours and friends, it doesn't seem like Albertans are sharing in the oil and gas prosperity like we once did. Instead, we feel the pinch every day in our wallets whenever we go to the gas station, the grocery store, or even at home when we want to turn up the thermostat. So what can be done about this? Well, the size of our provincial government's toolbox for tackling these key issues is tightly linked to the revenues generated from the oil and gas sector. It's then worth asking, are we getting a fair deal for our energy? And if not, how do we get more value out of our resources? Well, to answer the first question, all you have to do is look at the price differential between the bitumen and the West Texas in Intermediate benchmarks, which currently sits around $20 per barrel, meaning we are underpricing a significant portion of our oil production. Quality and transportation factors force ref uh, producers to lower their prices and sell the majority of our bitumen to only a select group of refiners. So to ensure the long-term prosperity of all Albertans, I think it's time that we revisit the status quo and we look at ways that we can keep more of the value here at home. We can't keep doing the same thing, expecting different results. And this is where innovation, paired with the right provincial leadership platform, 
can come into play and make a big difference. So at Well Resources, we focus on unlocking value from energy sustainably. Protecting the environment doesn't have to come at a cost of economic livelihood, and if done correctly, it can actually strengthen our economy. One of the exciting technologies that we've developed is the selective extraction of asphaltines process, or SELEX process, a process that removes carbon directly from oil, producing a clean, upgraded oil product. This technology can be bolted onto existing refineries or upgraders, or even as a standalone project. Decarbonized oil has stronger pricing power and generates additional benefits elsewhere in the value chain. For example, the carbon that we remove in the form of asphaltines normally occupies a large portion of the pipeline export capacity. Refiners don't understand how to fully use this resource and simply treat it as a waste. By, remo by removing this carbon and improving the quality of the oil before we sell it, we can significantly decrease our dependency on diluent for pipeline transport, which could free up to 30% additional capacity in existing pipeline infrastructure. And this is an absolute game changer. Do more with what we already have. Decarbonizing our oil before we sell it also puts Albertans in the driver's seat when it comes to controlling emissions. Instead of only focusing on cutting emissions from oil production, which accounts for a fraction of the life cycle emissions, we have an opportunity to remove significant quantities of carbon from the value chain ahead of the combustion cycle. This is a preventative measure rather than a simple Band-Aid solution. A 25,000 barrel per day selects facility would prevent the release of 1.3 megatons per year of carbon dioxide. And on top of those benefits, the carbon we remove is itself a resource that is currently going to waste. There's a tremendous amount of good work that is being performed on how to use this carbon instead of burning it as we work towards building an economically and environmentally sustainable economy. To do this work, we need to work together with a diverse set of stakeholders with unique perspectives spanning multiple industries and our friends at Benchmark will elaborate on some of the exciting applications that we're currently pursuing, such as waterproofing additives, filtration media, and feedstock for fibers. Before I pass it on to them, I just want to end on this. We are at a critical juncture where today's policy investment decisions will set the trajectory for our province's long-term prosperity and ability to meet environmental commitments. Given the right policy framework, leadership, and technology, we have the opportunity to get more value out of our resources, diversify the petroleum sector, and keep more of the money within the province while creating lots of good paying new jobs along the way and protecting the environment. With that, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Warren. I would now like to invite Steve McDougall, owner of Benchmark, to spend a bit more time, a uh, bit more, uh, to speak a bit more to the need for this kind of innovation here in Alberta, and why Benchmark is partnering with Well Resources to pursue to pursue it as they grow and diversify. Well, good afternoon. Thank you, Kathleen. Uh, welcome, Rachel, Marlin. Kathleen, Warren, King. Benchmark International is an Edmonton-based manufacturing company offering a wide range of equipment and solutions to clients all around the world. This includes instrumentation for protection of water systems and on-site gas separation equipment for aquaculture, water treatment, mining, and medical applications through our oxygen solutions portfolio. Our singular aim, however, is to develop solutions that positively impact the world's most precious resources. For us, that focus currently is on water, energy, and food applications. We believe that water quality, energy production, and food supply and security only increase in significance on a global scale. Our core capability is applying engineering and manufacturing capabilities to commercialize science-based innovation. And as Warren said, 
addressing the issues of climate change and energy security will take the cooperation of a diverse set of stakeholders with unique perspectives spanning multiple industries. So we're proud to partner with Raw Resources and to bring their innovative ideas to life. We're currently working together on opportunities to utilize the products from Select's process that provide an excellent adjunct to solution to our gas, uh, gas separation business that we already have. This will further improve our gas transfer efficiency of our systems and also provide a platform for us to enter the aquaponic market on a commercial scale using the granular carbon that Warren mentioned earlier. Benchmark's global reach will enable these innovations to reach important markets, allow innovators to concentrate on building technical solutions, and enhance global participation in an improved environmental performance, and truly establish a circular economy between our province's energy products, the global seafood supply system, and clean water operations. These opportunities before us are exciting for Albertans. These innovations will create employment across a broad spectrum of skills that this province has a great history of developing. Manufacturing in Alberta makes sense to us, and being able to diversify our solutions and markets is exciting for Benchmark as we continue our growth agenda. The people here at Benchmark have already made an important contribution to the local economy. Their hard work lands in all corners of the world to enable those economies to prosper too. The role that government can play is an important one for Alberta. Creating the proper policy framework is essential. Businesses like Well and Benchmark can succeed when there's certainty in our policies and when all stakeholders come together towards common objectives. This pandemic's been hard on all of us, and like many, I'm hopeful we're now able to restore some normalcy to our lives and return to driving our effort towards building a stronger future for all Albertans and ensuring a prosperous environment for us to thrive in our daily lives. The more recent supply chain events were triggered by the pandemic and exacerbated by the unrest in Europe has put unprecedented strain on businesses' ability to progress at a reasonable pace. Getting and delivering products is essential to our success. We need our governments to prioritize the movement of goods and people if we're going to be competitive in this global economy. Benchmark is an Alberta-based manufacturer that contributes to GDP, produces global exports, and chosen to do business in Alberta. Still, we need the government to provide the economic and regulatory conditions to make it viable for business like ours to continue. Benchmark is happy to be part of this innovation ecosystem in Alberta. Working with Well Resources and other innovative stakeholders, we are committed to ensuring Alberta continues to be a global energy leader while addressing climate change, environmental, and environmental impact, and sustainability. We know the government feels the same way and we welcome their participation in our alliance. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Steve is going to take us on a bit of a tour shortly, but first we'd be delighted to take any questions that you may have. And um, I'd love to get uh, not Leo and or Ganley on, on this. I apologize it's not in relation to today's announcements, but I'm hoping to get your reaction to the province's extension of the electricity rebates to December. Uh, do you think this goes far enough to help Albertans struggling with the high rates of inflation and high energy prices? 
Um, you know, it, it really does, doesn't. I think what we have to remember is that, uh, you know, this government in large part created the problem by removing the cap on, on prices that we had had in place. And in fact, Albertans have been struggling under growing burdens around utility prices since December of 2021. And here we are in July of 2022, and there's been a lot of talk, but nobody's actually seen any of that money arrive in their bank account yet. So uh, even if, you know, they do going forward take this this theoretical rebate and extend it till December I think most Albertans would like to see any of it land in their bank accounts first um, so we know that people have already been struggling so going six months from now means that we are ignoring the previous seven months and so that's not good enough moreover there is a whole range of things this government could be doing to undo the damage that they have done as far as piling more and more costs onto the backs of Albertans whether we're talking about the the 500 million dollars just this year that they're taking through uh, personal tax increases felt the most by low-income people whether we're talking about tuition fees uh, insurance costs, utility costs, uh, so many other costs. This government just hasn't been acting fast enough. And uh, Alberta families need them to be focused on their needs rather than uh, the uh, internal drama of the uh, governing party. Yeah, just as a follow-up, we have heard from economists who say the province could have reached more Albertans, not just those paying electricity bills. We know we've heard concerns from renters who perhaps don't pay their bill directly and, and are worried that this rebate could be caught up with, with landlords that don't put it through. Um, but economists say that perhaps a provincial tax credit program could have been more effective. I guess would you have supported that sort of program? And are you concerned Albertans will be left out? Or are you already hearing from them? Well, we're already hearing from Albertans that are left out. And there's no question that, that there's... There's a range of, of solutions that are available to support Albertans who are struggling from skyrocketing inflation, and uh, and this government is 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 you know they they basically spent three years taking from Albertans with two fists, and now they're giving back with one or two fingers, and they want us to throw a parade for them. The fact of the matter is, is that there's a broad range of things that they can do to ensure that all Albertans get the benefit of inflation uh, uh, protection strategies, as opposed to a few here and there. And moreover, perhaps if they'd done, uh, you know, if they, for instance, with the, the, the you know, re-index the tax system, looked at tax credits, there's a whole range of ways they could have done this much more efficiently than what we're seeing so far because we've been waiting for the rebates now for some time and as I say uh, doesn't look like anybody's gotten their money except maybe the uh, the, the power companies themselves. Uh, thank you for taking my question. This is uh, directed to the gentleman from um, uh, uh, benchmark. The <clears throat> Alberta Innovates is working on a process that uh, treats bitumen, then warms it, and then spins it into fibers that then become input into carbon fiber manufacturing. Uh, is your whole process similar to that? And if it isn't, could you describe it for us, please? No problem. And this is well. Uh, this is Warren Chung from Well Resources. So our selective extraction of asphaltines process is a supercritical solvent-assisted process that removes, that granulates carbon from bitumen and produces a granular carbon product that is solid, that can be handled, that is dissimilar to the, um, to the process that you just described. Uh, the advantage with our process is that we get a very clean carbon feedstock that can be used for a variety of processes or applications. And uh, shortly after this presentation, we'll actually be presenting on some of the exciting things that we are working on. Um, but just to give you a, a brief overview, some of these applications include waterproofing additives, turning this solid carbon feedstock into fibers, and then also using this um, solid carbon feedstock as as a, uh, as a filtration media uh, for water treatment. And this is one of the endeavors that we've been working on with Benchmark. Thank you. Oh, I, I do have a follow-up. Uh, it sounds like your uh, technology is almost a partial upgrading technology. Uh, is that the case? And um, if it is, uh, what happens to the uh, 
uh, the oil that is non that isn't an asphalt team uh, does it become light crude that can then be resold in the markets? In a sense, yes. You could call this technology a partial upgrading technology. Uh, but where we differentiate ourselves is we are partial upgrading through decarbonization. The main function of our technology is to remove the carbon, and as as an added benefit um, to the oil processing, the, as you mentioned, the remaining oil has very desirable properties, better pricing power, um, it's easier to transport via pipeline using less diluent, it's easier to, to process further into um, finished products for transportation, uh, simply because that carbon that we remove uh, removes a lot of the contaminants from the oil. So in a sense, yes, uh, we are definitely adding value to the oil, uh, but we're doing that uniquely through decarbonization. We're using decarbonization as an opportunity to add value to our resources. If I could just, if I could just add one thing, though, uh, just to mark. The other thing to, just to, I guess, acknowledge as well is that, you know, Alberta Innovates is doing is is doing uh, good work. They've got a, a, you know, a small amount of resources to do this kind of research. So they're doing research. Uh, we had wanted them to be able to move more quickly with respect to applications and commercial applications, uh, and and so they produced a, a paper about six months after we produced ours, which describes the the opportunities um, and and uh, that. That's good, but what we really should be seeing right now is uh, a much more rigorous approach from a, a public policy perspective, because uh, where government actually is the expert is in creating the, the regulatory and, and um, uh, economic environment for uh, researchers both in and out of the, the private sector to, uh, to find investors to then scale up. And so um, it's, I would argue that uh, although Although there's been some great stuff come from Alberta Innovates, that uh, they're not being given the the resources necessary to really push the the regulatory and economic support frame uh, in the way government should be in order to move this uh, effort along uh, faster. Again. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, so both my questions are for Rachel Notley. UCP leadership candidate Brian Jean said today that Albertans are getting ripped off at the pumps. We know that Alberta has alleviated the provincial gas tax this year, but why are Albertans still paying nearly the same gas prices, if not sometimes more than people living in Ontario, for instance? What's going on and do you agree with Brian Jean? Well, as you know, uh, or as you may know, uh, uh, Alberta's NDP has called for uh, an audit of uh, random uh, um, uh, retail uh, deliverers to find out exactly what is driving the pricing uh, in different parts, not only of this province, but across the country. Uh, because absolutely, people need uh, gasoline uh, to live their lives. And, and the broad range in, in pricing across the country uh, doesn't really make a lot of sense to, to Albertans and to other people. And we need to make sure that when our taxpayers' dollars are used to uh, help bring down those costs, that quite honestly, that that. Uh, consumers are getting the benefit of that. Um, and we need to be looking at uh, broader ways in which we can make uh, life a little bit more affordable at the gas pump. So um, we need more transparency. And uh, so far, people have resisted that. And I think that that's the, the best place to start. Thank you. And my follow yep, uh, follow-up question. Um, an economist from Calgary says due to inflation, the average Alberta household is currently facing financial pressures equal to adding $400 in new expenses each month. And he also estimates since the government of Alberta is profiting from higher oil and gas prices, we all know this, we could, they could afford to give each household $125 per month to offset their financial pressures. What do you think of that? Would, would that be possible? How would you like to see the government support families during this time? 
Well, I think what's really true is that Alberta families across this province are, are really struggling under the weight of inflation. And it doesn't seem to me that we're having a, a broad-based conversation about how best to support those families while at the same time not furthering inflation ourselves. And I do think that we have a lot of opportunities at our disposal. But unfortunately, our government's not having those conversations. They're, they're sort of nickel and diming people. They're being backed into a corner in, in, in the most extreme situations situations and they're not taking um, a, a real sort of comprehensive approach to supporting families. Meanwhile, what we know is that they have actually added to those pressures in a lot of different ways. As a result of de-indexing the tax code, um, Alberta families uh, are now paying uh, $600 million more a year in personal income taxes. That is entirely due to a decision taken by this UCP government. Meanwhile, on top of that, we see tuition going up, uh, car insurance going up, utilities going up, and as we've already talked about, uh, prices at the pump going up. So um, there is room for the government to step in, but we're not really seeing any uh, um, open, uh, thoughtful conversations about how to do this uh, in a way that will make a real difference in, in the lives of Alberta families. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my question is for Warren. Warren, I understand from your uh, introductory remarks that your process removes the asphaltine from the, the bitumen. But in your uh, reply to my earlier questions, you mentioned that it actually decarbonizes the oil, and which kind of implies that you're taking carbon out, and when that oil is turned into fuel and then that fuel is burned, that that would lower scope three emissions, which seems if it was possible, would be a remarkable thing and add a tremendous premium to the oil. Could you clarify that for me, please? Yeah, so when we take a look at a whole barrel of oil, or for that matter, a whole barrel of bitumen, when it goes through the refinery, that whole barrel is processed in a way such that you maximize the amount of liquid transportation fuels that are destined for the consumer. And to, to an extent, existing processes include transforming asphaltines through coking, uh, such as thermal, thermal processes or, or catalytic processes to take that portion of the barrel and turn it into a liquid type of fuel. But where we're sitting, when we take a look at how to utilize the resource, we say, you know, you know what is the carbon content of this particular constituent? Does it make sense to turn this portion of the barrel into a combustion fuel? And our answer is no. Uh, there's much more value to be obtained by removing that carbon from the barrel, leaving the remaining portion of the uh, saleable oil to be turned into liquid combustion fuels according to the status quo. But that solid asphaltine portion that we remove up front, uh, the opportunity for Alberta is, is amazing for, for not only improving the quality of our oil uh, through its removal, but also the utilization of that product. And that's where we see a lot of the opportunity. We think that there's a lot of value that's being left on the table by treating asphaltines as something that is destined to be burned. Um, not only is that bad from an environmental standpoint, but again, you're losing a lot of value on the table because you could be using that product for a bunch of other innovative, high value, value added applications. Um, and we're really excited about uh, what we've been working on and are able to share with you. Thank you. Uh, I do. Uh, okay, so uh, just a, a, an observation and then a question. I, mean, I, I suppose that uh, if you're taking the asphaltines out and then you're creating a light or medium oil, you essentially are doing, you don't need any of the diluents and you'd free up 30% of the pipeline space, uh, which would be another considerable benefit to Alberta producers. Now my question, what is the cost of, per, let's say per barrel, so that we can compare it to uh, uh, ex you know, uh, existing production costs, what is the cost per barrel to take that asphaltine out of the bitumen? Sure. Um, obviously this is a location dependent and user dependent and how you integrate the process into existing uh, operations. But based on our previous experience with existing commercial users of our technology over in Asia, of which we have five commercial, uh, dem uh, 
implementation units, uh, the largest being 20,000 barrels per day. Uh, the, the base cost for operating a select unit is about $150 to $2 a barrel. It's very cheap. It's a very low energy intensive process. Uh, our focus is on keeping it simple, uh, staying away from those thermally intensive and catalytically intensive processes and just focusing on the separation. Uh, if you will, this, this process is actually based on the decaffeination process. So if you think about how to decaffeinate coffee, this is what we're doing except to oil. We're removing the constituents that we don't want in there um, and we can use that for value added purposes. Hi, this is Lisa Johnson from the Edmonton Journal. I just wanted to go back to something that um, Ms. Notley said. You mentioned that this sector um, and this technology, you'd like to incentivize it uh, if you mm -hmm. form government, and, and you talked about regulatory and economic support. Mm -hmm. Can you get into some of the specifics about what you would do there and how that how would that differ from what Alberta Innovates is, is already doing on that front? Absolutely. So um, when we were in government, we created uh, what we referred to as the PDP program, which was basically a royalty deferral program to incent uh, certain types of upgrading. And for instance, the, you've, you've heard, Lisa, about uh, stories around the interpipe um, uh, development uh, just yesterday and the day before we're running. Um, and that was done through the PDP program subsequently remodeled by the UCP in a way I don't totally buy, but nonetheless, uh, it was done by that program um, initially. And so the, this a version of that program exists now, um, and whether we used the current program or tweaked it back to where it was when we were in government, the point being is it was a program that was designed to incent the very kind of innovation and upgrading that is being uh, described here by Warren. And so that is one place where we we would look at finding ways to, to design the program in a way to, to incent uh, the kind of um, uh, uh, investor certainty um, that uh, they would need to be able to expand its application here. In addition, we would uh, move forward to uh, advocate to the uh, federal government that it be eligible for um, carbon credits under either the CCUS program or under with other uh, green fuel standard type credits. Uh, thirdly, we would uh, work to um, create a general provincial manufacturing strategy and, and one that uh, worked um, uh, collaboratively with uh, potential exporters to not only look at uh, market development but also export opportunities. So those are the the, uh, the elements of what we would do. Um, so that's sort of where government can play a role that's above and beyond sort of talking about the potential of the technology, which is mostly what we've seen through Alberta Innovate so far. Good work, don't get me wrong, very good work. But uh, we need to go from talking about and describing the potential to working with uh, stakeholders to start um, scaling it up to a place where we, we actually see the economic benefits. Uh, no, that's good. Thank you very much. watching and to learn more check out albertasfuture.ca